So I should probably be studying for my systems biology exam coming up in a couple days. But instead I got distracted and I thought about life. Specifically I thought about Conway's game of life. Uh, this game, uh, known shortly as, li as life, was uh, created by this guy named John Horton Conway. And I'll pull up an image of him for you. Uh, he, he created this game in 1970, as you can see, he's got a sick mathematician's beard, but I digress. He created this game called Life, which is a, it's a zero player game. And you might be thinking, well that's stupid, who would want to play a game with zero players? It's not really a game. Well, and that's the truth, you know, Conway's Game of Life has nothing on Settlers of Catan or SGS or uh, Cards Against Humanity. But it's still pretty cool. So a zero-player game, how it works, is you interact by creating an initial configuration or a seed, and then you let it evolve. Uh, so the, the, the evolution of this um, system is totally determined by its initial state. So I'll open up the game, and I'll show you basically what's involved. Essentially, you have this grid, right, an n-by-n -n grid, where the squares can either be black or white. A black square is alive, and a white square is dead. And there's four simple rules that govern this game. I've outlined them here. Any live cell with fewer than two live neighbors dies. This is as if uh, through starvation. Any live cell with two or three live neighbors lives on. And any live cell with more than three live neighbors dies, kind of like overpopulation. And any dead cell with exactly three live neighbors becomes a live cell. And the game evolves in generations. So every step, every single grid, is, every single square is looked at. And we determine whether it lives on to the next round or dies based on these four rules. And from these four simple rules, you can really get the most unpredictable, chaotic, and really just crazy outcomes. So, Conway himself believed that no pattern or no initial seed could generate or grow indefinitely. Um, and this was proved wrong by this guy named Bill Gosper from MIT, uh, where he showed the Gosper gun, uh, which is an initial configuration of alive cells that actually displays infinite growth. Um, so the program I've wrote here, that I'll scroll through quickly, basically plays the game for you, real time, and I've set it here uh, to, to have the appropriate number of, of live cells to create this Gosper glider gun. So I'm just going to run it uh, in, with Python, and we're going to see what that looks like. So it's a little laggy, but basically what's happening here is everything that I've explained. We started with an initial seed of alive cells, and very, very quickly, like on the order of milliseconds, we're progressing through generations, where each generation, a cell lives or dies based on those four different rules. So this is the Gosper glider gun that we see, right? And it's creating, it's shooting out these little spaceships that just kind of fly on forever until they hit the wall and die. Anyway, that's the Gosper Glider Gun. But you can do a lot of cool things, actually, uh, with this game of life, depending on what your initial configuration is. So right now I had it set up to create the Gosper Glider Gun. But if I go into here and I modify just one of those values, so before it was, it was uh, alive, and now by changing that to a zero, I'm changing uh, this cell here, right? It's now dead. And we're going to see a completely different outcome. One tiny result is going to create this crazy chain change. So if I go and I replay the game, let's see what we see. Immediately you notice it's very different. It stops creating these little spaceships that shoot out. And we see this explosion of symmetries. There's growth 
There's death, there's migration, populations explode, they rise and fall. Uh, we see certain self-sustaining populations. Um, and uh, I'll just shut up and let you watch it in peace until it ends. We'll see what happens, actually. So what actually what actually happens here is that the the whole system settles into this steady state, and you see life forms that essentially live or propagate forever. There are certain ones that oscillate, right? Like a bar of three vertical will actually oscillate between vertical and horizontal every single generation, uh, and then there's other ones that are kind of steady life forms, like the square is constantly in a state where these four stay alive every single generation and everything around it remains dead. There's other weird ones like these kind of football shaped ones and this checkerboard shape and all of them satisfy the rules and they survive. Um, and I don't know, this stuff really fascinates me. It's, it's, it's amazing how such incredibly complex and chaotic systems can arise from these four simple rules. I mean, these four rules, the ones that I, I, I showed earlier, they're about as basic as you can get to define a living system. But yet, we see something that actually appears to have a life and a mind of its own. It's so chaotic and it's so random. Um, that it seems like it's almost alive. Like for example, if I go into the code, right, where before I changed um, one cell that was uh, alive to dead, and we saw that crazy you know, explosion of growth, the gospel gun totally fell apart. I can go and I can change uh, the number of squares in the grid. So right now it's a 56 by 56 uh, grid square, uh, square grid, and I'm changing it to 55 now. And let's check out what effect that has on the entire system. It starts out similarly, but if you watch it and if you rewatch the video, I mean, we'll notice that it's a totally and completely different outcome. You'll have to excuse the, the lagginess because screen capturing this video with the appropriate frame rate and running this program is kind of tough on my shitty computer. But anyway... kind of awesome just watching these like you root for the little life forms like sometimes it appears as if the entire system is about to reach a steady state and there's a little bit left you know moving around in the corner and all of a sudden it spreads to another one and explodes and then travels across the entire screen like here it looks like it's done but oh there's a little gun that explodes and sets some more stuff off and then it keeps going. Oh, and now it's now it's in another one of these steady states where it gets kind of boring to watch. But here again, we see some blinkers, oscillators, and then these donut shapes. That here's a new one. That's like a little square. Anyway, there's so much more that that I think you could add to this. Like, just imagine that maybe the cells had like a life right or a health associated with them so instead of just being black and white you could have like green yellow red and then dead cells um, and then the the rate at which they procreate and and proliferate maybe depends on their health or how much neighbors they can have depends on their health or maybe they get unhealthier as they get progressively as they get overpopulated or why does the grid have to be squares you know Maybe uh, they could be hexagons, or if we are super ambitious, ambitious, we could extend it to 3D, right? I mean, the possibilities are almost endless. But um, really, what amazes me about this entire thing is is 
how much uh, chaos and how much uh, randomness and beauty almost in a sense too can come from these simple rules and then we think about how complex you know humans are and everything and then we can get all meta and, and shit but I don't really have the time for that it's like one in the morning so I just thought I'd you know share with you uh, Conway's game of life you know if you look online you can find much better videos like my computer can only run such large grids but there's stuff online with you know, thousands uh, upon thousands of, you know, square grids uh, where you see much bigger self-sustaining life forms and almost ecosystems. Um, check that out, right? Like, you can get uh, entire communities of, um, so the Gosper glider, glider, glider Gun is like the smallest one, but you can get um, even larger self-sustaining ecosystems that, that produce, you know, these big spaceships that move around. It's super cool. Uh, take a look. Hope you enjoyed this video and hope you learned something new. Cool. Cheers.